So I just need you to imagine this. You got your MCQ1 results and you scored 469. You also remember that you have a friend who is called Dr. Yellow. So I'm going to present him with this. Dr. Yellow. Dr. Yellow scored 256, but Dr. Yellow wrote the exam in a different era. Okay. And then you also remember that you had another friend called Dr. Blue. He scored 527 and he wrote it in a totally different time as well. And here you are, you scored 469. So here you are as Dr. Red, your friend is Dr. Blue, this is Dr. Yellow, and all of you have different marks written your exams in different times and different years, okay? But these are three different numbers. And you are thinking, hmm, am I the weakest? Are the rest of my friends stronger? I mean, Dr. Blue and Dr. Yellow. Here's the shocking news. You might all be having the exact same performance in the MCCQ1. And before you go like, Dr. Brony, what are you talking about? By the way, that is my name. I'm Dr. Brony and I'm the lead with at Medcognito. And today in this video, what we're going to do is that I'm going to clear up the MCCQ1 score mystery because we have so many people who have seen various scores over different years and they don't understand, okay? So we are going to do that in the context of three friends, Dr. Red, Dr. Blue, and Dr. Yellow. Each of these people wrote the exam from a different exam era. And by the end, you will understand exactly how to compare their maps. So let's get into this. So your friend, Dr. Blue, okay? Dr. Blue wrote the exam when the score for the exam was between 50 and 950. This was those who wrote the exam between 2015 to 2017. That is Dr. Blue for you. And the pass mark at the time was 427. And this, your friend, Dr. Blue, scored 527. So that means that he had 100 marks above the pass score, which is exactly one standard deviation above the pass score at the time. So the take home point is that this friend of yours, Dr. Blue, had a strong performance and he has a solid academic foundation. And if he's able to carry on a good Nakoski score, he can have a very good chance of getting into residence. Now, let's go to your second friend. Your second friend is Dr. Yellow, okay? Dr. Yellow took his exam between 2018 to 2024. You know, when Dr. Yellow took the exam, the range was 100 to 400. And the pass mark during 2018 to 2024 was 226. And Dr. Yellow scored 256. So what happened? Dr. Yellow got 30 points above the pass. And so he also had one standard deviation above. What is the take-home point for Dr. Yellow? He is in the same competitive bracket as Dr. Blue. So what should Dr. Yellow do? Look, focus on building a clinical experience, which is really strong, and just go ahead and refine your application, like your CV, your personal statements and everything. And then here you are. You are Dr. Red, right? You are one of the people who just wrote your exam in 2025, April, May, and beyond. What you have to understand is that during your time onwards, the range of the exam, the lowest mark someone can get is 300. The highest mark someone can get is 600. And the pass mark is 439, okay? So Dr. Red got 469. Again, he also got 30 points above the pass score, which is exactly one standard deviation above. So what is the take-home point for Dr. Red? You are going to be considered the same as all the two other friends, Dr. Blue and Dr. Yellow, even if your number looks smaller or bigger. So this is the real reveal, okay? And I'm sure you are surprised, but this is the real thing. 527. 256 and 469 are different numbers, but the performance level in the MCQ1 is identical in each candidate's era. The time they took the exam, 527, 256, and 469 are very identical. Why? Why is it so? It is so because the Medical Council of Canada changed the scoring range, the pass marks, and the scaling system over time. Okay? So if you compare how many standard deviations above the pass score you are, you can actually then use that to align your results across the years. So you can look at the marks you got this year and compare it to somebody who took the exam in 2018 or compare it to somebody who took the exam in 2015. Now, now that we've looked at how these three different candidates compare, I want us to take some critical things and think through them, okay? Five things I want you to take home 
with you. Number one, you've got to understand your position so far as the MCQ1 results are concerned. Don't just look at the raw number because if you look at the raw number, you say, oh, somebody did better than the other person. Somebody even scored two, five, six. No, but it is because they were scored in different areas. So don't just look at your raw number or your raw score. Rather, check how far above or below the pass mark you are in a standard deviation, okay? And this is the real competitive standard when you compare it to others from different areas. Number two, you've got to identify your weak areas, okay? So your detailed score report shows which content areas pulled you down because the medical council will send you a supplementary result form, which is going to break down everything. What I need you to do is to focus your next study phase on those specific weaknesses, okay? Instead of restudying everything. That is assuming you failed the exam. But even if you are going into the Narkoski, don't forget that the Narkoski also covers the same objectives as the MCCQ1. And so the areas which were your weakness, make sure you hit on those points for your exam preparation, all right? Now, if you are just above the pass, what I needed to do is to strategize your exam path. Plan a targeted improvement strategy in other exam areas like the Narkoski, like preparing for the CAMS interview, like other assessments like the MMI, okay? And depending on other provinces which you are going, they may require specific things as well. The other thing I want you to note is, which is the fourth point, is boost non-exam factors. What do I mean by that? Residency programs value more than scores. So what I needed to do is build a strong reference letter, gain some Canadian clinical experience, polish your CV so it can stand out beyond the regular, you know, candidates. And if you need help with your CV building, Metcognito, we have a program which can help you to put your CV together very well. Okay. Now, the fifth point I wanted to pick up is keep alternative routes in mind as well. Okay. Some practice ready assessment programs even skip the MCQ one entirely. So I needed to research your options early. So you have multiple pathways. Okay. Residency, practice ready assessment, and even the practice ready assessment. Look at what each of the provinces have. And I've done a couple of videos on some provinces like Nova Scotia, like BC, and in the future, I'll be doing other videos on other provinces as well. Okay. So research your options early. So you have multiple pathways to your licensing journey. And don't feel that you are trapped by your scores. So, what's the big picture here in all these things? Your score is just one part of your story, all right? Dr. Blue, Dr. Yellow, Dr. Red are all proof that number isn't everything. It's about how you use those numbers to open various doors for yourself. So I need you to drop your MCQ1 error. Did you write it between 2015 to 2017? Did you write it between 2018 to 2024? Or did you write it from 2024, 25 and above, right? I need you to drop that in the comments. And let's talk about your scores and their true meaning and make sure that you subscribe and the next video might just push you to the need you want for your residency application. So I hope Dr. Blue, Dr. Yellow and Dr. Red were helpful in clearing up some doubts about comparing various points. See you in the next video. All the best.